Yes. Uh, here we are, 2019. So I'm so glad that oh, we are together again, and uh, I'm glad for the grace of God that sustain us and that empower us and that give us the vibrant life to live in 2019 and uh, I want to share a little from my devotion so it's in Luke 12 7 so the Bible said but even the very hairs on your heads are all number so is the, the number is, is, is interesting that the hairs on your head are numbers not counted in Kim Jane version and in the, it came from the Greek word arit meo oh, as I, I need to roll my tongue arit meo so uh, the hairs on my head are number not just counted it came from the the original uh, root word in the noun form it is number not counting so uh, the verb form became uh, the hairs on our heads are number. It, it doesn't mean like the hairs or like, for example, like I would tell uh, uh, how many hairs on my head. Like God know is like, uh, for example, is like a hundred thousand hairs on my head. And uh, like God is ma making, like counting our hairs, like I lose maybe 100 hairs or 200 hairs and uh, a new 250 hairs uh, grew back and it's not like that. Uh, the hairs on my head are so number. It means this very hair on my head, I will show. <laughs> I'm not sure you can see this. This very hairs on my head has a number. Maybe it's 571230. So if God knows our hairs by the number. The hairs on our heads are number. So God knew us by the name and with the example of the, uh, 100 sheep, God knew us by our names and God even numbers our hairs and that is how much he cared for us. And so this Bible verse is not talking as about like uh, uh, God, God is all knowing God. It's not talking about that when it is said. Even the very hairs on your heads are all numbered. It means God cares. So, uh, so we have many questions. So, how about what we are dealing with our past, like the childhood trauma, the trauma of the past, like the abuses. And so, uh, tonight uh, it is a night time for me. And tonight I want to pray for those who are afflicted with the trauma, like abusive trauma or many kinds of trauma of the past, especially from the childhood or teenage or at any points of life. So I want to pray for you because uh, I want to share my experience a little bit. Uh, uh, the forgiveness has a many levels. So we, as a Christian, we know we, we have to forgive. But the Lord in the, uh, in the re recent past, uh, I should say, uh, in December 2018, the laws are... Uh, brought me uh, to a place of blessing the enemy like blessing those who abuse us whether it's a physical or emotional or sometimes you may have gone through a sexual abuse or but any uh, whatever kinds of abuse blessing the enemy is not easy for us we need the grace of god um i can see the milestone in my spiritual growth and uh, what i'm learning to be is a a pet dog to the Lord. I don't mean my pet dog, Rich. <laughs> my pet dog is really, really spoiled. <laughs> I mean the real pet dog, like the best dog in the world. Like, uh, in other words, it's a yieldedness. And I will yield to the Lord. I will say to the Lord, Lord, please touch my heart. I want to I wanna be who you want me to be. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to feel or uh, have emotion what you want me to have and i want to think like you think and i want to have hope like like you see the world with the eyes of hope and the eyes of faith and so i spend lots of time in prayer when i say prayer is not just about asking it is about yielding myself to god because i have 
some great offenses in my childhood, like uh, they are something that I have to deal with uh, is is very traumatizing and it wound me to my very core. Uh, it wounded me to my very core. And so uh, the Lord asked me one day, like, so would you crucify them or would you get on the cross for them? Uh, uh, because I'm re I was reading uh, the book called Dealing with Disappointment, written by one of my great heroes called Bart Hathaway from Nebraska, United States. And he, he talked about uh, disappointment with God or disappointment with self and disappointment with others. And it, it, that book is very, very great. Uh, I want to recommend that book to you if you are dealing with disappointment. And he, he shared about also share about dealing with disappointment with children too and he he address about he deal he deal with uh anger because uh his oldest daughter went into rebellion in her teen years and so every time his wife and he thought it could not get worse and it did uh one day he poured out his heart to god and he realized he was quite angry with his daughter or many levers and uh, he was angry that uh, she had messed up uh, his powerful little family a christian family uh, and he was angry that she devastated his personal relationship and he missed her on the on the other side and he his heart was broken with disappointment in the midst of his anger god spoke to him so uh are you going to crucify her or get on the cross for her uh, he said, I was undone. I began to weep uncontrollably. And so, and then he, he talked about, like, uh, uh, I, I will read what he wrote. Um, I knew that God had exposed my, uh, my conditional love. It was still quite some time before the circumstances surrounding our daughter changed. But I changed. Disappointment was replaced with hope. Instead of fighting against her, I began to fight for her and not for myself. Instead of being angry, I became brokenhearted for her. God's love changed me and healed my sick heart. And in the end, our faithful God reached a heart to, to he is good. So it's about hope. And so uh, I agree with the Lord to get on the cross for those who abuse us or who uh, betray who betray me or who left me or anything uh, that, that that did badly to me and I agree with God to to forgive and to bless to bless them so I ask God Lord heal my heart and give me the grace to bless them and so I began to bless I began to bless in the middle of the night so and suddenly it's, it's like the room where this very room now I'm sitting is like uh, I, I felt like the light getting brighter and I, I felt the presence of God which which is the strongest which was the strongest in the last five years and and I felt the tangible peace and tangible joy I didn't I I, I don't say I'm not saying that like uh, I am fit suddenly but there was a major breakthrough and major healing to my heart and i, I became a uh, deliverer and i began to bless the enemy and bless their family uh, actually they are not my enemy though uh, sometimes it is not easy that we deal with the trauma of the past and but uh like the heaviness which i felt for years was lifted up in just a split second so there was a major breakthrough and on and on and on and on day by day i spent time with the lord and i the lord is not just dealing with me he is healing my heart like uh, he will expose one offense after another and one person after another that i need to forgive and i uh, i need to let go and i need to bless and so I agree with God, uh, whatever. That doesn't mean like letting ourselves uh, uh, to be trampled down or stepped down, like like aphorism. Like, it is not about letting people walk over us, okay? It is not about, it, uh, when I say about forgiving others, that doesn't mean God, uh, uh, like, 
uh, we are making atonement for their sin. We cannot make atonement for their sin, only Jesus. So uh, repentance on their side is with them and with God. And But I pray that they will be repentant and will change life. And anyway, I pray for their children and the family and speak blessing over them. But on our side, on my side, I need to be right with God. I need to be healed because that John 2 said, like i wish above all things beloved i wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in hell just as your soul prosper i want my soul to be prosper i want my soul to prosper to get well so i i just spoke to god and and till today and in the future too day by day when you pray and when jesus taught uh, taught us about the lord's prayer never forget there is a a portion of forgiveness so when we forgive like we we change we are metamorph metamorph we, we encounter metamorphosis transformation uh, into the life of more freedom and deeper peace and more joy and and i want to share about the the real god glory too in isaiah 58 it talk about the glory of the lord will be your real god so Oh, I want to share a little bit about this before I take you too long. When we look back in our past, sometimes the, the past flare-ups, and when we look back to the past, we see the trauma, the fear, the anger, and everything. The, the past can take over us like Israelites were chased by the armies of Egyptians. So uh, they were so much worried that their past will take over them or possibly kill them. Sometimes we, we are in a plight that um, how can we be delivered from the past? Uh, I won't say you will forget your past. When we look at the past, we will see the trauma, the wound, the sadness, the sorrow, but make sure you see the glory of God because it is in your real God. So the glory of God is, is covering us as a real God and is between you and the past. In other words, you will see the glory of the Lord in, like as a restoration in Isaiah 58. If Isaiah 58 is actually talking about restoration, so the glory of God as a real God is, a, is in other words, the Lord promising us to restore what we lost in the past. He will restore our lives. The years that the locusts have eaten will be restored. And also, the joy, the peace, the love, and everything will be restored. I... I felt bitter in the past because I felt lost. I felt many losses in our lives, and my family met losses in our lives too. We uh, like uh, being lied to by a friend in financial case and a huge amount of money in the business or everything that is not easy. So uh, we talk about loss, not only just finance, sometimes we lost our hopes and everything. Like the woman with the issues of blood, she, she lost all her money, and she also lost all her hope in the doubt in the in the medical doctor and she lost everything and and the lord talked to me very sympathy for example if you lost like the, the, the lord said to me if you lost one thousand us dollar and i will restore to you a hundred thousand us dollar so what do you lose he asked to me in restoration there is no loss so I pray for restoration, so never feel bitter. We are worshiping the God of restoration, and His glory of restoration will be our real gap. When we look back our past, when we look behind, we, we, we won't just see the trauma, the past, the sorrow. We will see the glory of the Lord because it is our real gap. Uh, Father God, now I pray for my brothers and sisters, my friends, and those who are together with me right now and who have been through so much in their lives, who has been through so much loss in their lives, who has been through so much trauma in their lives. I pray that, that you will heal their hearts and be with them in your manifest presence and will restore what they have lost and will restore many portion than what they have lost and that you will restore for years that the locusts have eaten. In 2019, they will see they will see restoration and also your glory as their real God. I pray for them. Lord, please heal their heart completely. 
oh please Lord and send the right people to nourish them and I pray that they will be able to bless others because the blessing is uh, the blessing and forgiveness is not about them it's about uh, not about their enemy it's about them like because they are the one who blesses they are the one who live in the blessing zone they are the one who live in the zones of love and by the side of the river lord i pray for each and every one of them and and i pray for my family too and my friends too and my life too lord bless us and may we walk in yieldedness like a pet dog in jesus name i pray amen amen god bless you god bless you love you